Hello guys, welcome to Alan Carr's Pharmacy Classes. And today's topic is Bright Field Microscopy. This topic is actually a part of uh, this third year B Farm syllabus, uh, a microbiology course. And that's why I have included this uh, topic in our class. So the Bright Field Microscopy is a type of a microscopy technique. This microscopy technique is actually divided into two different types. The first is the optical or light microscopy and next one is the electron microscopy. So this optical or light microscopy is also, this technique is also of different types. The first is the bright field microscopy, second one is the dark field microscopy, Third one is the fluorescent microscopy. Fourth is the phase contrast microscopy. And there is a one more left that is confocal microscopy. So these are the five different kinds of light or optical microscopy. And why they are, these are known as the optical microscopy? Because in these microscopies, light is actually used to know the, to increase the or enlarge the image of the object. Whereas in electron microscopy, in light is not used. Here, the strong electron beam is used. That's why this is, this is a separate class of microscopy. And these are actually further divided into two different types. That is transmission electron microscopy. That is TEM. And scanning electron microscopy. That is SEM. And these all are actually the part of the microbiology course of 6th six semester course, B farm. And we will act, we will discuss each and every technique one by one. So please be with me till the end of this video. Uh, so this uh, so let us this, uh, come to our topic again. That is bright field microscopy. Here I have already drawn these uh, the ray diagram of this this kind of microscopy. Actually, this bright field microscopy we are actually using the two different lenses. And these lenses, the first lens that is a this is actually the objective lens and the another lens is eyepiece so these two lenses are adjusted in a such a way so uh, as you can see that this a b is at the actual object and this by the these adjustments we can see the virtual image which is highly enlarged so in this way this bright field microscopy works and this bright field microscopy is basically the one of the most elementary form of the microscopy technique and this uh, this this can be performed easily through either through a, a light microscope or compound microscope compound microscope is having a two lenses whereas the light microscopy in this light microscopy there is a only one lens so this the name bright field why it is known as the bright field because in this bright field microscopy, the background is light. The background is actually brighter and the, the specimen is dark. That's why it is also termed as bright field microscopy. So let us discuss the what are the actually its steps and then we will discuss about its advantages, disadvantages and uses. In this, uh, in, while performing this microscopy, first of all, the sample is placed on the stage. The sample is placed on the stage and incandescent light that is that aims at the, the lens just below the specimen. So in this way, the specimen will get illuminated by the light and, the, and then the light passes through the specimen. And that objective lens, this magnifies the image of the object and transfers this light to the eyepiece. Okay, as the as this the as this ray diagram is also predicts this, so the uh, light is now uh, transmits to the eyepiece and which is which again goes to the user's eye. So users will actually see the object while coming through. First of first is the objective lens and next one is the eyepiece. So in this way the image is actually enlarged. Now if the illumination is higher. That means the magnification will be also improved and the illumination will be less. That means magnification is also less. 
So these are actually the simple steps by which we are performing the bright field microscopy. So there are some advantages and disadvantages of this microscopy. So for one by one we were discussing it. First of all, let us discuss the advantages. The first advantage is it, it is very simple. There are very minute uh, uh, adjustments are required and this can be easily performed by even by the simply layman. So this is a, one of the very simplest kind of microscopy. That is, uh, that, that's why it is a, one of the, the basic and elementary form. So it, it can be performed very easily in the laboratory. Second thing, it, it, its op optics actually does not alter the color of the specimen. If the color, if the specimen is not stained, that 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 means the, the optics are actually that uh, made in such a way. This microscopy is actually made up of a simple and transparent optics. So this does not interfere with the color of the any uh, color of the specimen if it is not stained, even though if it is not stained. Now the third is, and it can be a new technology can be also adopted. For example, it, we can use uh, the camera or a video camera along with this to, to uh, shoot out the photographs uh, along with this microscope. And the last is the versatility of this technology. The, it can be used for, for the wide variety of samples, wide variety of stained samples. That's why it is also used for the, uh, to see the various kind of uh, specimens like bacteria or it may be, or it may also be used for the pharmacognosy uh, uh, specimens. And there are some disadvantages also. First of all, if the contrast is increased, if you try to increase the contrast, there will be a distortion of image. This is the first serious disadvantage associated with this technique. Another thing that is the live bacteria is cannot be seen because, because of the poor contrast. If there is no contrast, we cannot see the any image. That's why we have to stain the specimen. That we have to stain with because again, if there is no change in refractive index, because the bacteria and microorganisms are very thin. So if there is no change in the refractive index, that means we cannot see anything in that kind of technique even. So and third thing, the for a stain, for a staining, we have and we should have a knowledge of the staining. That is also an essential thing. And the last thing that is the intense light. If we are actually using here the light, illuminating light. So if there is a high illuminating light, that may destroy the sample or kill the microbes also. If they are not stained and we, are, we want to see them under the, uh, my, uh, this microscope uh, in a live habitat. And these are the, actually the advantages and disadvantages associated with this technique. And uh, lastly, they, there are some application or users part that we have already discussed. This microscope is basically used to see the stained samples. Okay, the stained samples and which are naturally pigmented specimens. So these are the, actually the first use and the second use it can be it is actually useless for the bacteria or unstained samples or tissues. It can be somehow it is used for the to see the live bacteria. But the, those bacteria should have some sort of pigment that is, or color that is present in them. Otherwise, they are, because of the lack of contrast, we cannot be able to see them. So this is all with uh, today's lecture. Hope you have liked it. Uh, please share and uh, please give your comments and please like my video. And uh, in, in the upcoming video, we will continue the different kinds of microscopy one by one. Thank you. Thank you very much.